from sitting on Dale Earnhardt's lap to winning his first Cup Series championship. Hey guys, it's just I here, and I'm going to be, if, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be going through all of Chase Elliott's highlights through up the years. This is the evolution of Chase Elliott from when he started racing NASCAR to 2020, or present time. So, to start off, um, there was like an interview that his dad, Bill Elliott, did, I think in like 2002 or something. And then, he has a son, which is Chase Elliott, in his lap. Um, I think I was talking to a few guys, I think on NBC or like Fox or one of those, one of those broadcasts. And then one of the, one of the people, I don't know what his name is, but one of the people said, hey, when I introduced you to this person, and everyone was like, yeah, this is my son Chase. He was sitting there and he like, like a little boy or something. It's really, really awesome. <laughs> it's also really weird to see this little Chase compared to what he, where he is now. And then there's a photo of him sitting in Dale and her's lap. So, well, actually, if you were sitting in Dale, no, that's that's probably before the interview, actually. So that yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. Sitting in the Intimidator's lap, that's a uh, really cool for Chase Elliott. Um, and then let's go ahead and fast forward to basically when he started racing. Um, I believe he joined. I don't know when he actually started racing. Let me know when he actually did start racing. Um, but, but like if this does if it does does get successful, I'm probably gonna make like a remastered version, maybe like. Want to get more info or something? I probably should have done research on this. This is based off, like, the knowledge I know. Because Chase has my favorite NASCAR driver in the entire world. So this is based off my knowledge. But, yeah, you guys can let me know. And give me more facts and stuff about Chase Elliott. But for now, this is what I know. Based off my my knowledge of Chase Elliott. So, I think he got into k and I think he did he. I don't know if he ever got wins in k and I mean, he may have. And then he went to ARCA, and I think he won his first ARCA race either at Pocono or Iowa. I believe those are the two wins he got in ARCA. I don't know which one came first, but I think he won those two races in ARCA. And then, I think in 2013, he went ran from the number 94. I think it was either a part-time car or a part-time schedule or something, but there was one position, or one road race, I mean, that he actually was in contention to win, and that was in Canada when he was battling Ty Dillon. Lee, and this was the final lap, and they were like switching positions. Chase Elliott looked like he had the lead, but then Ty Dillon got up uh, and took the lead back. Then coming to the final turn, turn, Chase Elliott kind of misjudged it a little bit, in my opinion. He kind of misjudged it, and then and getting in Ty Dillon, Ty Dillon ended up spinning. Chase Elliott ended up saving it from almost spinning out, and then Chase Elliott went up to win his first truck series race at Canada in a controversial finish. So obviously, Ty Dillon was not happy. He was upset, and like, went over and I think I, like, talked to Chase or something. And then Chase said in his winning interview that that's not how he races at all. So, yeah, there was that. And then in 2014, it was announced that he would run full-time in the number 9 for Junior Motorsports in the Nationwide Series at the time. But the next year, in 2015, he was going what we now know as the Xfinity Series. So, yeah, Chase Selle, uh would be a rookie in the Xfinity Series, and he would be very successful there. He would end up um, in Texas. He... Beat out guys like Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick to actually drive away and get his first career Xfinity Series win at Texas, which was very impressive for him, for the for the young gun. Uh, he was 18 years old at the time. But then next week at Darlington, I think he had a pretty decent car. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, wasn't, I, I started watching NASCAR like in 2015, so I didn't watch NASCAR at the time, so I didn't see the race or anything. But I think a late risk caution happened, and then he went to the pits and, like, I think took four tires, which got him back, restarted, like, fifth or something. So they had to drive up, but then ended up beating Elliott Sadler in the last lap pass, and he would go back-to-back, -back winning at Texas, and then next week at Darlington to go back-to-back -back in the Xfinity Series, and, like, as 18, year, 18 years old. And I think it was at that moment that he started to become a championship favorite, a championship threat. And then the next week, I think he would kind of cool off until we got to Chicagoland. He would end up getting his third win. Um, so, yeah, that would be three wins now for him, for the rookie in the Xfinity Series, which is very impressive for a rookie. Um, then here I am say, <laughs> saying that's impressive for a rookie in the Xfinity Series to get three wins, but Harrison Burton was a <laughs> Xfinity Series rookie this year and got four wins. So, and two coming in the last three races. So, yeah, there was that. And, um... Then, he kind of cooled off once again, but then, um, at Phoenix, he finished ahead, and he was obviously had enough points 
to be awarded the 2014 NASCAR Series Championship as the rookie for Junior Motorsports. So that was really cool for Chase Elliott. That was really cool for me also because like I, I am, Chase is my favorite NASCAR Series driver in the world. Obviously, like I said earlier. Um, so yeah, it was very cool to see that. But you think at that point he would go to the Cup Series full time in 2015, but he didn't. He would actually be going to the Cup Series part time in the number 25. Um, but then in 2015, it was announced that Jeff Gordon would retire as 2015 would be his final full time season. Although although he would drive part time in 2016 after Junior got his concussion in Michigan, so yeah, that wasn't really his final. I mean, it was final full time season. He ran a part time in 2016, but yeah, so th that opened up the door for Chase Elliott. He have probably have a successful 2015 like he did in 2014. But he only he had kind of a maybe a step backwards, almost won at Michigan, beating out Kyle Busch, but Busch got past him with like five to go or something, and Elliott finished running up. He did get a win um, at Richmond, so that helped him out. And then uh, when it came time to the championship again, he would finish running up in the points to Chris Busher, who ended up getting the 2015 NASCAR Series, Series Championship. And it was at that moment. That it was announced that Chase, well, not at that moment, I think it was like a, maybe mid season, that Chase Elliott would drive the number 24, taking over Jeff Gordon. There were so many high hopes for Chase Elliott, and a lot of people started, like, like there was so much hype around the 24 team. And then when Jeff, when then we said goodbye to Jeff Gordon, sort of as he would race again in 2016, like I said, um, drive for uh, Dale Jr. after concussion and all that. Um, so I think it, people started. Going to Chase Elliott, started sticking with 24 and seeing how Chase Elliott would do. Chase Elliott would then end up getting, it, it started off the season with a banger, Daytona 500 pole award. That is very impressive, very impressive for Ricky. Unfortunately, once the Daytona 500 rolled around, his day would end early as he um would kind of get loose and drift in front of Carl Edwards, spin out into the grass, and the grass does some damage, can usually get give a lot of damage to your car. And that's exactly what happened to Chase Elliott. He spun sideways into the grass, and then the front end just bowed into the grass and caused major damage to the front end. Obviously, would end his day. So that was disappointing to see um, for Chase Elliott. And next week at Atlanta, which would be his home track, he would finish 8th, his first top 10. And then next week at Las Vegas, he would wreck again after uh, Kenza got sideways, and then Chase Elliott had nowhere to go and kind of got back behind Matt Kenza. Then we went to Auto Club two weeks later. At Auto Club, he got us... I think he got sixth or something. I think he was in a photo finish with fifth with Ricky Stiles Jr. and all that. But then he would get his first top five, I think, at uh, Texas two weeks later at Texas. And then at Bristol, he would get finished fourth. And then at Talladega two weeks later, he would finish fourth after once again starting on the pole, just like he did in Daytona. And this time he would be pretty, pretty, had a pretty good car, but didn't win, unfortunately. And then he would cool off a little bit. And then up until we got to Pocono, um, and he was really, really strong. And looked like he was going to cruise with the win until a bunch of cautions started to come out. And then that would ultimately go against Chase Elliott's, um, like, strategy or something. And then he would fall back. He would rebound to finish fourth. Um, but unfortunately, he did not get the win. Next week in Michigan, he also had another pretty good car. But then, obviously, had just a bunch of restarts just, like, caused to the 24 team. The win. Logano ended up getting the win at Michigan. And then Chase Elliott finished second. His first first run out finish out of Medi to come. But we'll, 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 get, we'll, get, the, we'll get there. We're going to get there. Don't worry. Um, so then um, we had the, the for his next great performance, we had to fast forward to around, maybe around Bristol, honestly. The Bristol night race, he would run real early. But then then um, the, the, that race got postponed to Sunday, I think. And then Chase Elliott would restart second, but then fall back, and then he was involved in one of the late rate late race accidents, and never was in contention. Then next week in Michigan, he would have high hopes after what was a obviously a, f a great first uh, race at Michigan, finishing second to Joe Logano had a dominant car. Things were looking up to him again. He once again had a good car, looked like he was going to cruise through the win, but then a late race caution came out for I think Mike McDowell or something. So then was he and Kyle Larson in the front row. With around ten to go, he, they they restarted the front row, and they both got awful restarts. They all they both almost got turned on the restart. But Larson had a better jump. 
Lars got the lead, cruised through, and ended up winning at Michigan. And I almost forgot that at Dover, like a long time ago, Kansas won, Larson got second, and Do uh, Chase got third. This was at uh, this this that was at Dover. I forgot I forgot to mention that. But then okay, back to Michigan. Uh, Larson got the win, his first career win. Elliot would finish second for the second Michigan race in a row. Another another disappointment disappointment for Chase Elliott. And then um, he would kind of cool off in the regular the last two races of the regular season. And then when we got to the first race in Chicagoland, it also looked like he was going to curse through with the win. But until coming to round four to go, Michael McDowell would blow a tire and completely make Chase Elliott's first win even harder. But unfortunately, when they came on the pit road, he got lost. He lost the lead on the pit cycle, and Martrix Jr. won the race up here, but a little bunch of guys stayed out. Ryan Blaney, Casey Kane, and I think Carl Edwards also stayed out. So then Chase Elliott restarted about maybe fifth or something. So then, once the green flag dropped, Shurek's got a good jump, and he ended up winning the race. Chase Elliott would fall back and finish third, which was still good. And then, next week in New Hampshire, he had a pretty decent car. Had a pretty much a maybe top 10, maybe top 5 car. I think he fall, fell back and finished, I don't know, like a 10th or something. And then Harvick will get that victory there. And then the elimination race in round 16 at Dover. Chase Elliott was pretty good on points and finished third at Dover. So that was impressive to see. And then next week at Charlotte, in the round of 12, he, the rookie, he, Chase Elliott, he advanced in the round of 12. And people started thinking that if he was lucky, he might advance to the round of 8. Um, and then next week at Charlotte, um, Chase Elliott would ex absolutely dominate the race, honestly. He would dominate until another late race caution came out. And then, uh, come to the restart, it was, I think, Jimmy Johnson the, uh, that was leading. And then Austin Dillon was right beside of him. And then once the green flag dropped, Austin Dillon got bumped. And then Chase Elliott got bumped from behind by uh, Kyle Busch. Spun the 24 out. Also spun the 3 out. Three. And Austin Dillon ended up going hard to the wall. I think Brian Scott also got involved. And I think Paul Menard as well. And that would end Chase Elliott uh, today. Unfortunately, he would finish like 30 something DNF, and then that would put him behind in points. So the next week at Kansas, he would have to rebound. And then once again, late in the race, he started to have a good car, and then he would pit and all that until he had engine issues, had to come down pit road, and then that would be another DNF for Chase Elliott. And unfortunate for the 2014. That would come into the, the, the elimination race at Talladega in the round of 16. That would put him. In a must-win situation, he needed to win, and he started like in the top five. And once the green flag dropped, he he was pretty strong. He got the lead for a little bit, but then towards late in the race, I think he started to fall back and finished tenth. Wasn't enough for him to advance the round of eight, and unfortunately, he did get eliminated in the round of twelve. So then the last four races, he was just kind of cruising along and all that, and finished his rookie year in the tenth in, tenth in points, which is pretty good. As Jimmy Johnson, his team, it recruits to his seventh championship, what we now know as his last championship, unfortunately. He didn't quite get to eight, number eight this year, unfortunately. I wanted to see that, and a lot of other people wanted to see him do that. At least win, but unfortunately, that just didn't happen. So the next year, in 2017, things, uh, a, lot of, a lot of hype, once again, was on Chase Elliott. Once again, would get his second career pull, at, or not second career pull, but second career pull at Talladega. Or not Talladega, Daytona, the se his second Daytona 500 pole, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, in 2017, he would start on the pole again, and, he, and then this would actually, he would actually cruise to his first ever duel win. He won duel one in 2017, which was cool to see, but unfortunately that one didn't count in points. He was able to start on pole for the Daytona 500. This time, only 2016, he had a pretty good car, and once again, looked like he was going to win until coming to round two to go. He would run out of fuel. What I think he didn't run out of fuel. He got the he switched. I think he ran out of fuel, but then switched uh like the little lever thingy so he'd go to the reserve. So then I got back running again, but unfortunately he lost the draft and fell back and finished I think fifteenth or something. Very disappointing for uh, Chase Elliott, uh, Kurt or Cruz, and take his first Daytona five hundred win. So the next week at Atlanta, things uh, things uh had a, a lot of disappointment, um, for Chase Elliott uh, once again in his second Daytona five hundred. So the next week at Atlanta, he 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 at his home track once again. He also did pretty well. I think he finished fifth or something. So that was his first top five, I think, at his home track. So that was cool. The next week at Vegas, he would finish third. Next week at Phoenix, he would also have a good car. Cruised to his first ever stage win, winning stage two, but then fell back and finished, I think, eleventh due to like pit cycles. And then he finished tenth at Auto Club, third at Martinsville, where he would collect his second 
stage win of Martinsville after the lap car Stenhouse ended up bumping the leader Kyle Busch out of the way in the final turn. Chase Albert Cruz and Ed Jack Kyle Busch for the stage win. So that was pretty, pretty cool right there. And then um, he kind of cooled off a little bit. Then at Talladega, he had a pretty good car late until well, they're on 20 to go. He got bumped from behind by A.J. Elmendinger, spun the 24 and the 47 around. 24, Chase Sight almost got upside down. But the I think it was Joe Logano or something. He was right. He like went like this. But with Logano there, he, he would bounce back up. And then Chase Sight would ride the wall or something. And Elmendinger got upside down uh, on his roof. And then um, Chase Sight didn't, uh, actually didn't. wasn't out of the race because of that. He was out of the race because he and Eric Jones were actually disqualified because they continued their car, I think, once the red flag dropped. So that was that was kinda that kinda sucked for the twenty four team. Ricky Stenhouse but then cruised his first career cup to his victory in that race. So that was cool right there. And then at Kansas, um I think Kansas was the next race. Or was it Kansas the next race? Yeah, Kansas was the next race. Um he had a good car early until um, I think late in stage one, he would, um, have a good pit stop, but then come, came out of his box, well, actually, he took two tires, um, on his pit stop, he would come out, and then, uh, he would make contact with Michael Medell, spun the 95 around, did some damage to Chase Sully, and he would fall back, and that would cost him the win, unfortunately, and then next week in the Coke 600, he started third, he had a good car early, until he had engine issues, and then he stopped on the track, Brad Kozlowski, piled into Chase Elliott, had nowhere to go, and that would end both Chase Elliott and Kozlowski's day. Truex and Johnson were right there, like, slip slide to avoid that. I remember that. That was pretty cool. And then Austin Delmer cruised his first career victory. I mean, what is with all these wins that Chase Elliott keeps choking up? Which, choking up, we gotta remember that, because that'll come later. Um, always wins that Chase Elliott has a good car, then ends up, like, Get having issues that then people will get their first career win. That's <laughs> Austin Dillon will get his first career win in the Coke 600 um, in that race. And then I believe in at Dover, he had a good car, finished fifth. Um, so that was cool to see right there. I don't know why I feel like I see something that's cool to see a bunch of times. A few weeks later at Michigan, um, a lot of hype around the 24. Things were looking up after. Two run-out finishes in a row in his first Michigan, two Michigan races. Things were looking up for the 24. People thought that he was going to finally get his first career win. And I uh, finally and finally also win Michigan. Unfortunately, he had a good car. But then, once again, he had a good car. But then, once again, would choke it up and finish second to Kyle Larson. Yet again. Just three run-out finishes in a row. I believe it was around 2017, mid-2017, I think, when this... Whole nickname started coming around for Chase, like calling him Choke Elliot because he kept choking up races, or as they like to call it, choking up races. Like in like a term in sport, like if you like really really dominant in something and then like late in like the game or race or something, you end up like having issues like like real late. It'd be like oh you choked that one up or something. Sounds what Chase always being called, but after he continuously choked up these races. That looked like he was just going to cruise to the victory until he had issues. He kept choking them up. And then a few weeks later at Daytona, Junior would start on, on the pole. Elliot would start on the front row. And then he would have a pretty good car, but unfortunately got spun by a Michael Medell. And he was kind of fired up after that. Got spun with like maybe like a lap 98, close to lap 100 out of the race. But that didn't set, put him out of the race. He would still be in the race, um, but just f far back from everybody. And then he would continue to make, make his way up. But then on the final lap, he got spun out and, like, f got out of frame or something. And then, like, like they, they didn't bring out, the NASCAR didn't bring up the caution. And then they didn't worry about him. Stenhouse would end up cruising to his second victory in that race. And then a few weeks earlier, or not a few weeks earlier, a few weeks later at Michigan, things were once again looking up for Chase Elliott. This would be his fourth Michigan race after the first three Michigan races, he finished second in all three of them, so things were looking up, he had a pretty good car, I mean, he had a decent car, and had not, not as quite of a good car as he did in the first three races, but he had a pretty bad restart, on the overtime restart, he got snapped up by Matt Kenza, he fell back, and if he finished, like, maybe just inside the top ten, Larson recruits to his third, third Michigan victory in a row, 
uh, after a dramatic, like, a very cool restart that he got, like, started behind Shurex and Jones, and then he, like, bounced off of Shurex and Jones, made it, like, three, almost four wide even, I think, with Mac Hens at the bottom. He recruited his, to his third Michigan victory in a row. That, that was cool to see right there. Another time I said that again. Um, and then Chase, uh, once again, kind of cool off late in, uh, late in the regular season. And then at Chicagoland, he had a pretty good car like last year. Would win stage two, and then would finish second to Truex, which would be, I believe, his... How let me count. He has, like, Chase had so many runner finishes. I think this was maybe his, like, fifth or something? I, I don't know. I lost count. But he hit, this was another runner finish. But it didn't come without controversy because it was as it was announced that Chase Sutton failed post race inspection and he was docked some amount of points and I think it was fine. I guess Sim was I think fire or not fire. He, I think he was like um, out for a few races or something and then the team was fined some amount of dollars. So that was disappointing right there. So then next week, uh, what was the next week? New Hampshire. Boy, well, he was decent at that at that race. But next week at Dover, he would have another good car, and this one looked like he was actually going to win. Until don't don't keep in mind this Dover race was also the it was an elimination race for to try to make it in round of twelve. The four guys that I think were on the outside looking at were Kurt Busch, I think Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was just inside. Newman I think was just outside, and I think Big Murray was also outside too. Did he make it? In? I don't know. But um, anyway um, so. Yeah, Newman was in front of Chase Elliott, or Ch Chase Elliott was trying to get Newman to lap down, but Newman was on the outside looking in by just a few points over Stenhouse, so Newman was trying to make an end, and we all know how hard Newman is to pass, we call Newman the hardest driver to pass, but unfortunately that's kind of dialed down a little bit in like, the last few years, but in this race, it, like he it was definitely the hardest driver to pass, Chase Elliott tried and could not get around uh, Newman, and that allowed the second place car, Kyle Busch, to close in really quickly, and with two laps to go, coming to the white flag, Kyle Busch would make a move to the bottom after Chase Elliott would get loose. Um, or not to the side. Chase, like Kyle Busch would make a move on the top after Bush or not, but Ellie got loose. And then Elliott, unfortunately, was on the bottom. Bush was on the top, but Bush was able to start by him to take the white flag and win by only about a few tenths of a second over um, over Chase Elliott. So, yeah, that was uh, just another heartbreak for Chase Elliott. I believe his sixth runner finish. Again, I lost count. I could be wrong, but another heartbreaking win, heartbreaking loss for Chase Elliott. And then after the race, Jeff Gordon was uh, watching the race. And then he would like, like assault Ryan Newman or something. <laughs> like after Ryan Newman was doing a race interview after not advancing, Stenhouse would advance. Newman would not advance, but but like a few points. And I think after the race, Bush was able to lap uh, Newman. I think at the final corner, and then right as they crossed the line, Newman was ahead of. Ellie by like inches, so that was disappointing to see. Ellie, Ellie could never quite get around Newman, even after Bush passed him. Disappointing right there. So then, uh, next week at Charlotte, things all like it, like after he dominated last year, and then got spun like due to a restart or something. I mean, he had a pretty decent car, he had pretty 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 fast car, but not like a winning car. And then on that final restart, Shurex would end up cruising to take the victory. Ellie would finish second for, I think, a seventh time. And then next week at Talladega, he had another great car. Started, I think, like a third or something. And then he would end up leading a bunch of laps or something. And then we could bolt a daring move with, like, 15 to go with Talladega. And then he was, like, in position to win once again until... Round six to go. It was Larson and Daniel Suarez battle for the lead, and then the whole the gap opened. Chase Elliott tried to go to the middle, and then he ended up getting Larson cut a cut in front of him. They would spin out, make contact, and then like, um, that would send Chase Elliott out of the race. Larson and Suarez ended up wrecking, and that would be it for Chase Elliott's chances when he would finish tenth. And I also forgot to mention two big highlights. Oh my gosh, this is. <laughs> I'm I'm so sorry about that. Um, I'm so sorry, but the uh, I forgot like early in 2016 before Chase Elliott started on the pole for the 2016 Daytona 500, and he ran in the Xfinity race, and then he would end up getting the win by like a car length and a half over um Joey Logano, or like half a car length. I mean, <laughs> on Joey Logano, and then in 2017 in the Martinsville uh, truck race, he recruits his second truck 
series win in the in the in the spring twenty seventeen truck race. Um, so let's go. Okay, now back to where we were. Um, that Kansas things. Uh, Chase side was actually pretty good in points. It looked like he was gonna cruise to round of eight, and he, he did cruise to round of eight. He would finish. He had a good car. I think finished like in maybe fifth or fourth or something in the race, and then he would cr come to his first round of eight. And then Martinsville was the race, the first race of the round of eight, and he was good once again. And then Chase Sight looked like he was going to win this as well, but this is the one that probably hurt the most, pretty much hurt the most to Chase Sight. Hamill was behind, trying to take the lead. Elliot was able to clear him, but Hamill was right on his back bumper, and as may guess, going into turn three, Elliot got bumped by Hamlin, and Elliot would jump off the track, get up into the wall, and just... Or not jumped on the track. He would spin out and then get in the wall. And that was another heartbreaker for Chase Sally. Hamlin would actually not cruise to the victory. It was Bush that was able to cruise to the victory. But like a half a car length over Truex. And then after the race, Kyle, or Chase Sally was fired up of Denny Hamlin. He ended up like bumping him in the cool down lap. And then Chase like um, got out of his car. When Denny Hamlin got out of his car, they ended up talking and something. Very another heartbreak for Chase Sally. And then this race in Texas, people thought of Texas, Chase Sully would get revenge on it. They were together, but, like, there wasn't any, like, too much drama between them. Uh, Chase Sully would not really have a good Texas race. This would once again put him in a must-win situation. And then at Phoenix, he, he uh, with, like, less than 50 to go, he and Ham were racing for the third spot. And Ham, uh, 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 and Elliot had to win. He was in a must-win situation. And then... Elliot, like, bumped Hamlin several times, and then a few laps later, he drifted Hamlin up the track, and then Chase Sully got up in it, it, Hamlin. Hamlin going to the wall, and then a few laps later, this would cut down a tire at uh, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin would smash into the wall, and that would be his championship hopes at the window. And then Chase Sully, on a wrist over, would actually get the lead, and then it looked like he was going to drive away once again, but with 10 to go, he would get passed for the lead by Matt Kenseth, and Kenseth would, Kenseth would cruise to the victory. Chase Sully would finish second. Okay, this was the seventh. Uh, runner finish so this was the seventh sorry about that yeah this was the seventh runner finish and Kenseth that ended up being his final cup series win so yeah another heartbreaker for Chase he would not advance to his first championship four unfortunately and Shrix won the championship in 2017 and all that stuff Chase did finish fifth in the championship race even though he wasn't in the championship four he was still, he was still finished fifth not bad so 2018 a lot of hype around Chase Lee. yet again he recruited his second dual win in 2018 and, and dual two, he would win dual two, so that was cool to see. He ran in the Xfinity race again in 2018, but like a lot of issues happened to Chase Light in uh, the uh, Xfinity, the both Xfinity Daytona races, um, in the in the, in the Xfinity um spring race, <laughs> in, the, in 2018 he had issues and then like he was running good until he was involved in the big one spun out, but he did save it. Then like. That, like, one crew member was, like, had a window or something busted. Then he had to, like, run through. It was, that was cool. The Chase would fall back. And then he ran out of the 23 again at the Xfinity um, Fall Daytona race. And then had issues there. Was running good. And then had issues. And then fell back. But anyway, um, back to the Cup Series. He would start fourth for his third Daytona 500. He was running pretty solid early until around stage two. He would get bumped by Brad Kozlowski, set Elliott around, and he smashed to the wall. Ended his chances to win, and that was it for him. And then, the first, like, third or third, like, the first third of the season was completely so bad for, not just Chase Sully, but all of Chevy were getting used to the new Camaro that they switched to in 2018. And then, Hendrick was running awful. They were running into the back and whatever. And then, you have to, you have to find, uh, Chase Sully had finished third at, in, like, fourth race. At Phoenix, but then he would get penalized, and then he was also running pretty decent at Texas. Got penalized in that race as well, and then he would finish second, his eighth runner finish at Richmond. And I'm trying to speed this as fast as I can because it's a, almost a 30 minute video already. So, yeah, he would run pretty decent, like pretty not not good at all. Daytona in the Cup Series, he was running pretty solid early. I think he got, got um, I think he won the pole, but then like. Was involved in the big one, of course. Stenhouse caused it after Recky Spinhouse Jr. After Recky, after Rick Stenhouse Jr. got the name after wrecking a third of the field in that Daytona race. Eric Jones recruited his first career victory in that race, and then Kentucky next week he would run pretty and. Eh. But New Hampshire things were looking up for him, and he was running pretty solid. 
and actually finished fifth in the race after cruising to another stage win. And then Pocono next week, he cruised to another stage win. He was running pretty decent. Um, he was running third late in the race until Bob Wall slammed the wall in a scary crash at Pocono. And then Chase would fall back and finish outside the top 20 or something. And then comes Watkins Glen in 2018. He would start third behind Hamlin and, and Kyle Busch. And he had a pretty good car. And you must be thinking, every time I say that, he would choke up. But Bush and Hamlin both had issues on pit road. Chase Elliott had an issue on pit road that ran over one of his crew guys, but he got up okay. Um, so then, um, in the final race, uh, the final restart, it Chase Elliott and Shurex were able to drive away, <clears throat> and it was a two-car show. But with a lap and a half to go, Shurex got loose, and it looked like Chase Elliott was going to cruise, and then he took the white flag, and then Chase Elliott went wide in turn one after he, like, wheel-hopped, he had to knock it out of gear and stuff. Shurex got sideways, they, and then, um... Chase Elliott was able to just barely slide in front of Shurex. And then Chase Elliott was able to pull away a little bit from Shurex. And then coming to turn five, Shurex ran out of fuel. And Chase Elliott was able to cruise to his first Career Cup Series victory. Finally got his first, cup, first Career Cup Series victory. And his 99 start, 250 wins that was for Hendrick Motorsports. So that was cool. And then Chase Elliott ran out of gas on the cooldown lap. He was trying to burn it down for his father, uh, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Elliott, who was there. Check. Rick Hendrick was unfortunately not there. He called on the phone when after Chase had made his winning interview. So then he ran out of fuel during the cooldown lap. But then Jimmy Johnson, his teammate, went ended up back and giving him a push. And Joe, that was a pretty cool venture lap right there. That's what his uh, team said on the radioactive. So that was cool to see. So Chase would finally get his first career win. And then he was pretty solid. And then finished third at Bristol a few weeks later. And then went to fast forward to um, Dover. He would advance to the round of 12 uh, once again. So then we had to go to Dover. He was he had, I think, to start at the back, maybe, in this race. I could be wrong. I think he had to start like 11th or something. And he was pretty decent until he got a pit road penalty for an uncontrolled tire. That would send him to the back. And then he had to work his way up until a caution came out with around 10 to go for Clint Borer after Almer was in the lead. Chase elected to stay out. And then there was like restart five to go. And Chase Elliott took the lead, but Amarillo and Keselowski and Nibrecki made contact and collected Bowman and a few other guys. And then Chase Elliott had to beat out Danny Hamlin on an overtime restart. He did and cruised his second career victory. So he did not have to worry about Talladega next week. He advanced the round of eight. So Talladega, he was pretty decent, crushed on the final lap. Kansas next week, he had a pretty good car. And then he and Harvick were pretty even until Harvick had a pit road penalty. That opened the door for Chase Elliott, and he was able to hold off Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson to get his third her victory, so then he started looking up. He ended up advancing to the round of eight, but the f next three races, he the next two races, Martinsville, Texas, he didn't do pretty good. Um, so Phoenix he had to win again. He was in a must win situation again. Harvick had like I think ran out of fuel after his leading around around two to go. Chase over Cruz the stage one victory, and then a late race accident with Kurt Busch and Denny Hamlin. They made contact. Kurt slid down the track, collected Chase Elliott, and that would end his chances of the championship. Once again, so then coming into 2019, things were once again looking up for Chase Elliott after getting three wins in 2018. People thought that this might have been his year to actually get his championship win, and um, he started off the year not not bad, not bad. He started off pretty poorly, but maybe a little bit better than 2018. So then he kind of like I don't know, he wasn't really that good. He got second in Martinsville, and then two weeks later at Talladega. He would start, I think, inside the top 10, got a stage 2 win, and then he would end up taking the lead late after a late race accident, and he would cruise to the lead and get the win at Talladega after a few wrecks happened in the final lap. Larson ended up flipping, but Chase Elvick cruised his fourth career victory and his first win of the 2019 season. He would end up advancing to the playoffs, so he didn't have to worry about the next few weeks. For the next few weeks, he was on fire. He had, like, top fives here and there. Then, like, the next few weeks, he kind of dialed down, had accidents, and, like, fell back. Until we got to Watkins Glen, he would, deja vu, he would lead 80 out of 90 laps. All but 10 laps of Watkins Glen, starting from the pole. And deja vu held off Churex, and Chase Light cruised to the victory. His second victory in row at Watkins Glen, his fifth win, uh, first career Cup Series win. And people thought that this would have been, the people people started thinking that this was Chase Light's best career, best track. And, um, yeah, indeed, it looked like he was. He was only on the list of few guys to actually go back-to-back -back at Watkins Glen. 
Jordan lists like Marcos Ambrose, Jeff Gordon, all that. And then Chase had ran out of gas again, but he did burn it out three times, so I'm not surprised that he ran out of gas there again. <clears throat> so then in the next few weeks of the regular season, he was kind of here and there. And then he got to the Charlotte Roval. Um, Charlotte Roval, he, he, I think he started, I think, inside the top ten or something. I had a pretty decent car early on, but then cruised, um, and then he would, I think, win stage two, which he it locked himself in the round of eight on points because of that, and then things were looking up for Chase on until le around 40 to go, Chase Elliott was leading on a restart, but then locked up the tires, smashed through the Tums Harper in turn, which was turn one, and <clears throat> I think if you uh, smashed in the wall, that would do front damage, but the tire barriers made it so that he would have minimal damage. They taped up the car, and he had to start at the back. He drove his way all the way up through the field and ended up winning the race. His sixth career victory, and then on the victory lap in his burnout, he would just, like, like went to the tire bearers where he ran and did burnouts and stuff, which was cool. But, um, wait, no, this was the round of 16. He, that, that, he advanced to the round of 12 on points. My mistake. Sorry about that. Um, That was this year, 2020, but we'll get to that. So then Chase Elliott cruised his, vi his victory, but then once he got to the round of eight, he look, had, looked like he was in a must-win situation in the round of eight, but finished second to Kansas and had to beat Breck, Kozlowski, Joe Logano, a few other guys. Logano advanced, but Kozlowski did not advance. Elliott was able to barely advance, but then the final four races, he had a disastrous round of eight, which would cause him to not advance to the championship four and had a disastrous end of the 2019 season. <clears throat> Coming into 2020, things were also once again looking up for Chase Elliott. Looks like he might have won the clash after a wreck fest, but then kept wrecking people and then like wrecked himself. <laughs> and yeah, it was it was just a it was just a weird race. Um, so then the duels, he was pretty. Eh, and then we got to Daytona Speedweeks. He would claim stage one, the first stage um win of Chase Elliott in that in the in that year. And then he had a pretty good car until he he missed the big one by like inches, but then like towards the final like ten laps he had like issues and stuff and fell back. Didn't unfortunately win. Unfortunately, we all know what happened in the race. Newman had a skier accident and all that, and he was out for the next three races. And next week at Las Vegas, ha Elliott had a good car, swept the stages, and it looked like Chase Elliott was gonna cruise to the victory. And on the final pit stop, he had a good pit stop, and the crews were high fiving each other. Until Chase Elliott had a flat tire, got up to the wall, and unfortunately cost his chances of the win. Very disappointing for Chase Elliott. The next two weeks at Auto Club in Phoenix. Phoenix had started on the pole and had a tire issue in Stage 2, fell, ba fell back, but did finish 7th. And Auto Club, he finished 4th. But then COVID hit, and then their virtual Chase Elliott was horrible in the pro invitational race, at, in, like other pro invitational races. So then when they came back at Darlington, Chase Elliott started, I think. Maybe top 15, maybe like 15th or something. He was pretty decent. Finished 4th in that race. And then Wednesday race at Darlington. He was running pretty well. And then looked like he was going to cruise his victory too. Until a late caution happened. He would take a few tires. Or like two tires or something. Maybe four or something. So then Chase I had to start behind Kyle Bush and Denny Hamill and a few other guys. Hamill would take the lead. Chase I was coming for... Uh, it took a second away from Kyle Bush. Look, he was about to make a move on Denny Hamlin for the lead until Kyle Busch misjudged it from behind of Kyle Bo or Kevin Harvick. Got a bit of the nine car, spun him out, got a bit of the wall, and Chase ended up giving him the bird. And that was the last green fly lap that Chase got spun out, and I think he finished like 30th or something. Hamlin would cruise on to the victory and had a celebration with like his creepy mask or whatever, with that smiley mask. So that was another heartbreaker for Chase. And next week in the Coke 600, he once again had a good car. A little bunch of laps until coming to two to go. His own teammate, William Byron, would spin out after a blown tire, brought up the caution, and uh, then Chase Light pitted four tires after everybody else stayed out. He ended up finishing third, but when Johnson, second place, finished getting a, a disqualified, he would finish second to Brad Keselowski. Another heartbreaker after <clears throat> after the race. Kyle Busch got kind of like. Got to chase Sally or like like talk to him a little bit. That was that was pretty nice for Kyle Busch there, and then he would end up. Um, and then it was announced that he would actually run for a bounty. He and Kyle Larson before the pandemic would run for a bounty, but with the Larson having that 
uh, saying racial slurs on like a invitational live stream, he would not collect for the bounty. But at the Char Charlotte Truck Series race, which I think was the Truck Series first race back from COVID, uh, Chase Elliott had to beat Kyle Busch to win the bounty one hundred thousand dollars for like COVID fund or whatever if he won, and he did win, beating Kyle Busch to finish second. And Kyle Busch had a pretty nasty interview or whatever, <laughs> but. Chase I Cruz and actually took a bow, Kyle Busch's signature bow after he won, which was pretty hilarious there. So then next week, at, uh, but then uh, the Cup Series race at Charlotte, he started near the back, and then the race was postponed due to rain. And Chase I had another good car, got past Kevin Harvick late, and Chase I with Cruz, and finally got his first career win of uh, first win of 2020, and his seventh career Cup Series win in total, would advance to the playoffs. Um, and then he kind of, uh, Chase, like, kind of cooled off a little bit. Well, he didn't cool off. Next week at Bristol, he had a good car once again, swept the stages until round three to go. He, he, and Joe Ligano were battling for the lead. Chase, like, kind of went way too wide in turn three, got up the track into Joe Ligano and uh, collected both of them. Both of them, like, fell back, and Keselowski would end up taking the win, and Ligano was not happy. He said he was, in his interview, that he was going to race Chase Selly the same way he raced him all throughout, his, all throughout I think, his career. And then a few weeks later at Miami, um, Chase Selly had a good car and leapfrogged Denny Hamlin, who was in front with around 30 to go in the final. Green play pit stops until lap car Joe Logano held up Chase Selly. Hamlin took the lead back. And then when Hamlin got past Ellie for the lead, that's when Ellie, um, or that's when Logano was able to let Hamlin buy. Or let, <laughs> that's when Logano was able to let Ellie buy. That was very disappointing for Elliot Hamlin to win. Elliot finished second. Once again, another run up finish for Chase Elliott. And then Chase Elliott Talladega had a pretty decent car, led a few laps, but then got wrecked out. And then I think it was at that moment he kind of cooled off a little bit. I had a top 10 of hot here in there. And then when you had to fast forward to the Daytona Road Course, about a few races left in the regular season. And this is the only, the first running of the Daytona Road Course. Which it was announced that that a uh, Daytona Road Course would officially replace a uh, uh, Auto Club, which is a really weird. I, I mentioned that it was rumored yet in yesterday's video that it was rumored that a uh, Daytona Road Course was actually replacing Auto Club for the regular season, or the actual like the Auto Club schedule, and now it is official. So a lot of fans are not happy about that. I'm really not happy about that. But that is like I said yesterday's video, another possible possible one for Chase Elliott. But speaking of road courses. Um, Chase like success on road courses. The race at the Daytona road course, he had a pretty decent car early on, but then late in the race, he would pretty much cruise and then like hold off, held off Denny Hamlin to get his third road course win in a row, second one in 2020, and his eighth career cup series win in total. And then, um, kind of cooled off a little bit. Uh, then, um, he would get a pull at Dover due to a random draw. And then coming to the playoffs, he would get the pull for the Southern 500. He would adopt, pretty much have, he and Truex had a good car. He, Ellie kind of fell back. Truex looked like he had a pretty good car. But then Ellie got back, got back in front, got back to the lead late. It looked like he was going to cruise until Truex started closing. When Ellie got to the top, Truex would kind of close a little bit. But then Ellie tried something new, went to the bottom. Truex got a good run. And then with that run 15 to go, Ellie, or Truex slid up. Got up into Chase Elliott, and then, like, or, or Truex got past. Look, thought he was clear. Got up into Chase Elliott, and they both made contact at the wall. They both had flat tires, ended their chances of winning. Kevin Hart ended up holding off Austin Dillon to get his other 500 win. So then Chase Elliott kind of, well, like I keep saying, cool, it cooled off a little bit. But then it was, um, uh, let me see. Round of 12. What was the first race in round of 12? Well, Oh, geez. Come on, brain work. You're doing a video. Oh, what was the first race in round 12? I don't remember, but... <laughs> but Chase, I think, was pretty decent in the race. The next week, Talladega. Um, he had a pretty decent car once again. Looked like he was going to cruise the lead until he was running short on fuel. A bunch of late wrecks and stuff. And then he would finish fifth. Looked like he might have... Uh, got He uh, started off, he might have gotten a penalty for going below the WL line. But the NASCAR revoked the penalty because... It, they announced that Chris Buescher were below the WL line, or, or kind of forced Chase Elliott below the WL line. So, Buescher would get penalized. Chase Elliott would not get penalized. Chase Elliott would then uh, keep his fifth-place finish at Talladega. So, that was cool. Then, next week at Charlotte Roval, 
and it was a road course. He was pretty decent early on, um, and then had more issues. He had like a tire go down coming to the re one of the restarts. He would have to work his way from the back and the front again to win another clutch win, which he did win again at the Charlotte Roval. His ninth career win, his second win at Charlotte, and his fourth road course win in a row. So that's cool to see right there for Chase. He advanced the round of eight once again. First race at Kansas and second race at Texas. He was pretty decent in those races. And then at Martinsville, he once again was in a must-win situation after Texas had a flat tire, fell back and finished 20th and went a lap down and never got that lap back. So then Martinsville, he was in a must-win situation, had a good car, and then late in the race, it looked like that Chase Elliott may have screwed up the win because the Jackman was over the wall too soon. But what the Jackman did, he knew he was too soon, went back to the wall, and then NASCAR would not give him a penalty, which was cool. It still cost Chase Elliott a few spots. But then on the final uh, pit, pit cycle, Chase would have a horrible pit stop, fell back to like 11th, had to rebound, got around two wrecks with around 40 to go, and then would cruise and advance to the championship four with, with his 10th win. And he said it was the most important win. And I forgot to mention he won the All-Star Race also. A million bucks also in uh, 2020 as well, holding off Kyle Busch um, around at All-Star Races here. <laughs> I forgot to mention that as well. So then he was finally, he... Joe Lugano, Brad Kisalski, and Denny Hammond battling for this year's championship. And Chase Light was scheduled to start on the pole, but then had failed Proust. Inspection had to start last, but he quickly drove his way up and uh, eventually got to the lead. But the Lugano leapfrogged the final pit stop, but Chase Light was able to drive around him. And Chase Light cruised to his first Career Cup Series championship and his 11th Career Cup Series win and fifth win of the season. So Chase Sub would be a champion, and, ch and both Jimmy Johnson, his teammates, last race, and also Clint Bohr and McKenzie's final race. So, and then, like, on the cool of our lab, Johnson got alongside of Chase Sub, and then, like, as they as NBC said, the passing of the torch, uh, which I, I honestly agree. Ch or Den or ch his <laughs> Chase Sub's now ex-team, I guess we can call him Jimmy Johnson, um, got seven championships and 83 wins, and now... Justin think is passing the torch. He's saying like, "Hey, hey, man! Like, go continue the legacy of me." Um, and uh, Chase is gonna try to make his run at seven titles. We don't know until if Chase is gonna win seven titles until he actually does it. So, yeah. And then, um, on the off season, like, um, Chase is pretty much not running an off season at all. He raced in the Snowball Derby about a few days ago. Finished third and stuff. He's also Get a race in the Chili Bowl, and it was rumored that he that Jim Johnson would race in the champ in the in the Rolex Twenty Four in January, but Chase Elliott would also run in the Rolex Twenty Four, but he would not run for the same team as Jim Johnson, unfortunately. So pretty much Chase Elliott not really having an offseason at all. But he had a pretty successful end of the twenty twenty season, one of the final two races after being in the most win situation. So that was cool. But anyway, guys, I think that's about it. For Chase Cell, the evolution of Chase Cell. This was a long, 48 minutes. Uh, my voice is getting a little raspy, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit subscribe and like the video and all that stuff. Really gonna help the channel grow. We'll see how this video does. I don't know how what this vi how this video is gonna do. Hopefully, it'll make me successful. But yeah, guys. Hope you guys uh, see you guys in the next video. Whatever video I decide to make. Um, I'm, and maybe if you, I, I maybe I might do a series out of this, like evolution of a bunch of NASCAR guys. I may, I, maybe I can do it. I don't know <laughs> if I can handle another like forty minutes again or something like that. But yeah, let me know if you guys want want this uh to be a series. Unfortunately, YouTube's gonna disable the comments, unfortunately. So just let me know on my Instagram account, NASCAR underscore Smithfield underscore Cup underscore Series, which is long right there. But yeah, let me know if you guys want to make this into a series or not. That'd be kind of like contact on my Instagram, kind of be like commenting on the video or whatever. But yeah, see you guys on whatever video I decide to make next. So yeah, see you guys. Bye.